Today, we're delving into a One Piece theory that's stirring up a lot of buzz in Japan, but it might not be as well known here in the U.S. We're embarking on an exciting journey into the mystery surrounding Nami's real name. Now, when you think of Nami, her unwavering determination and exceptional skills as a navigator immediately come to mind. Yet, the enigma of her origins continues to spark debate among fans far and wide. We're here to shed light on this intriguing speculation in a way that's easy to follow, so be sure to watch until the end. Now, if you're wondering, what is Nami's real name after watching this video? Please hit that like button and subscribe. And if you think you've uncovered the secret hidden in her name, drop your comment, found a secret. Now, let's get started. There's still many mysteries about Nami's real name. In this video, we're going to dive into some theories about what Nami's real name could be. Nami is well known as the Navigator, but there's a rumor about her full name and it might be Portgus de Soleil. Now, this name conjures up images of a girl under the sun, donning a straw hat and dressed in a one-piece. Sun, straw hats, and one-piece outfits, these elements perfectly paint a picture, don't they? Sunflowers also seem to perfectly fit into this sunny, straw-hatted, one-piece wearing scenario. Interestingly, during the Dress Rosa arc, Luffy wore a shirt adorned with sunflowers. Well, the battlefield where Luffy faced Diamante was also set in a field of sunflowers. This all indicates that sunflowers definitely hold a place in the mind of Aichiro Oda, the author. Moreover, from the arrow of Kamabaka to the names of the Kuja pirates, flowers and plants frequently inspire character names. Astoundingly, all of the princesses of the major kingdoms that Luffy and his crew have interacted with bear names related to flowers or plants. Let's take a look at characters named after flowers. First, we have Vivi from Alabasta and Rebecca, the granddaughter of the former king of Dressrosa. There's also Mancherry, the princess of the Tantata tribe, Hiroi, the daughter of Kazuki Odin, and Shirahoshi, the mermaid princess, all bearing floral names. Moreover, Mancherry and Reiyu are sometimes referred to as Kinreiyu, Japanese flower names that means yellow bells. Scarlet, Belle Marais, Rouge, and Big Mom, known as Lin Lin, are examples of female characters with floral names. You already noticed that all of these names are inspired by flowers. Robin's name might also come from the Red Robin flower. Olivia and Peony are additional examples of female characters with floral names. Particularly intriguing is Robin's possession of the Hana Hana fruit user, and Hana means flower in Japanese. But it's debatable whether this ability is genuinely related to flowers. Perhaps Robin's ability was inspired not merely by its name, Hannah Hannah, but by the concept of the flower. In summary, it's evident that in the world of One Piece, major female characters are invariably linked to flowers in some way. Princesses and key female characters in the story often bear floral names, suggesting a significant role in the narrative. This pattern implies that characters with floral names are likely to be pivotal female figures. Furthermore, it's anticipated that major female characters whose names are yet to be disclosed will also be named after flowers. Despite the extensive use of floral and plant names for characters, the absence of a character associated with sunflowers raises intriguing questions. Therefore, it's plausible to assume that a character related to sunflowers has already been introduced within the storyline. It wouldn't be surprising if a character associated with sunflowers appeared early in the story. So, who could be the significant female character whose origins are still shrouded in mystery? Indeed, it's Nami, whose name currently has no direct plant association. An exploration of Nami's connection to sunflowers within the narrative yielded numerous intriguing findings of. Belle Marais created a custom-made outfit for Nami, featuring lions and sunflowers, inscribed with the phrase, I'm Lion. When it came to naming the Sunny Ship, the Galley La Company Carpenters likened its owner to a sunflower. At that time, Manjur Sunflower was suggested as a possible name for Sanji. However, Zoro preferred the name Big Boo's Liono, while Luffy was keen on Lion Vessel. Thus, throughout the narrative, sunflowers and lions are intricately linked. Now, speaking of Nami, one could use the phrase, I'm Lion, to describe her. 
In the cover of chapter 1026, both Nami and a sunflower are depicted alongside a lion. The sunflower symbolizes false wealth, possibly alluding to thievery. Could this be referring to cat burglar Nami with a bounty of 66 million berries? Nami is symbolized by a cat and lions belong to the cat family. According to Wikipedia, Nami's representative flower is the sunflower. There are more instances where Nami uses lightning and interestingly, lions are associated with the sound of thunder, Ryan in Japanese. Characters related to lions like Enel with his thunderous powers, Shiki the golden lion and Absalom with a lion's face have all attempted to kidnap Nami. This reveals a deep connection between Nami, lions and sunflowers. When pondering over the hidden flower name in Nami's name, it seems that Sunflower is the only viable option. Possible names could be Himawari in Japanese, Sun in English, Soleil in French, and Sol in Spanish. The scientific names for Sunflower is Helianthus Anus, where Helianthus means turning around and Anus means the sun. In Japanese, Himawari combines the words for sun and to turn around, reflecting the flower's nature of facing the sun. In English, sunflower combines sun and flower, directly indicating a flower of the sun. The French tournesol combines turner, meaning to turn, with soleil, meaning sun. Similarly, the Spanish girasol combines girar, meaning to turn, with sol, meaning sun. Thus, the sun is an integral part of the sunflower's name across different languages. Lions, known as the king of the animal kingdom, symbolize royalty and power. In the world of One Piece, the Mink tribe represents the animal kingdom, and there are theories suggesting Nami could be their queen. Nami has the ability to wield Electro and was almost taken to the moon by Enel. She also felt a sense of familiarity when meeting Shirahoshi, hinting at the rebirth of two kings, among other evidence. And the Mink tribe gifted Nami with a treasure as a symbol of friendship, positioning her as a queen in the animal kingdom. There are works where a human is depicted as a princess of the animal kingdom. One such work is Princess Mononoke, released on July 2, 1997. One Piece began serialization on July 22, 1997, which raises the possibility that Oda might have been inspired by Princess Mononoke when starting his series. In fact, Aichiro Oda visited the stage of Princess Mononoke in 2013. The protagonist's name is Princess Mononoke is San, representing the sun and sunflowers. The film features a famous line, only the beast knows the true heart, speaking to the theme of true divinity. This aligns with the reverence for the dog god, a significant character which makes sense for the character Yamato in One Piece. Aichiro Oda's earlier work, Romance Dawn, features a character named Anne, reminiscent of Nami, both voiced by the same actress, Akimi Okamura, in the anime adaptation. It's conceivable that the name Anne could be slightly modified to San. However, if Princess Mononoke was a motif, naming her San directly might seem too derivative. So, the name could have been subtly changed to Soleil, which in French means both the sun and sunflower, without altering its essence. Have you ever looked into the meaning of poneglyph? Searching in English yields no results. In French, glyph means letter or character. Pone, reminiscent of the French pastry pogne, is often garnished with orange blossoms. This suggests that Nami's name might also be best represented by the French word for sunflower, Soleil. Considering Nami is a member of the D clan, it's intriguing to think that a significant revelation about her true name could be reserved for the story's climax. The mere fact that Nami was found smiling by Mel Marais in the Oikot Kingdom evokes the characteristic grin of the D clan members at the brink of death. Otherwise, the detail of her being found with a smile seems superfluous. In the grand narrative of One Piece, a character named Nami, which translates to wave in Japanese, undoubtedly holds a pivotal role. The surname Hortgus comes into play here, but speculating a new D-Clan name not yet introduced in the story is an impossible task. 
Thus, the focus shifts to the D-Clan members already present in the storyline, among which Portkus emerges as a strong contender. It raises questions about Rogue's death post-childbirth, especially since Sengoku mentioned in Chapter 550, Rogue passed away right after giving birth to Ace. Considering the two-year age gap between Ace and Nami, it's plausible for Nami to be born two years after Ace. Despite having different mothers, there's a possibility that Nami is Roger's daughter, hidden under a different surname similar to Ace. The idea that her true surname might be Gaul was also contemplated. However, since Roger passed away while Ace was still unborn, the notion of having children two years age gap seems pretty far-fetched. As previously mentioned, the character Anne in Romance Dawn bears a striking resemblance to Nami. This ties back to Rogue's statement before giving birth to Ace, suggesting names Ace for a boy and Anne for a girl. But why does Anne appear at this point in the story? The connection between the Portkus family and Anne from Romance Dawn, if unrelated, raises questions about who Anne really is. Therefore, it's hard to think that Anne and Rouge being unrelated. There could be relatives among those surrounding them, making it almost certain that hearing Rouge's words, if it's a girl, name her Anne, led to the naming. Ace's hat and Nami's hair share the same orange hue, giving them a sibling-like appearance. Viewed simply, the commonalities become apparent. Moreover, both exhibit an overprotective demeanor towards Luffy. Interestingly, I believe Nami has a connection with Koala. Both of them have orange hair. Their faces are strikingly similar as well. And Koala is one of the significant female characters within the Revolutionary Army. Now, if there were no connection, there wouldn't be a need to make them look so alike. In Nami's case, her parents, who were former Marines, were killed by a fishman. On the other hand, Koala's benefactor, a fishman, was killed by the Marines. The possibility that they might be sisters is something to consider. Excluding Portkus, other options seem far-fetched. If it were Portkus, any other option would lead to inconsistencies. Some might think that Nami's real name fits with Anne, but that doesn't align with a flower name. Also, Anne has changed her hair color to blue. But with such a slight change in letters, we get sun in there. However, that would be too similar to Princess Mononoke. Therefore, the only name that doesn't lead to any contradictions is Soleil. With other names, there's always somewhere the story doesn't add up. Even statistically, we can't completely rule out Sun as a last name for other members of the D family. But considering the likelihood and impact, Portkus and Soleil seem to have the highest probability. Now, in conclusion, Nami's real name would fittingly be Portkus de Soleil. Can you see how significantly flowers are valued within One Piece? One of the most profound scenes featuring I.M. takes place in the Flower Moon with Pangea Castle. This very flower room is where I.M. was present. The kanji for flower consists of grass as the radical with I.M. positioned above it. As if symbolizing I.M., who wears the crown of a king, the flower holds a deep symbolic meaning. That's all for today. Here on this channel, we post popular theories about One Piece from Japan. If you like One Piece, we'd be happy with your support by subscribing to our channel and commenting. And thank you for watching until the end. We'll see you in the next video.